So I just want to take a few minutes and talk about the different styles of Arctic heat sinks. Um, this is going to cover the Arctic I-11, 12, 32, 33, the CO models, and the Plus models. Um, so first of all, the Arctic I-11, I-12 are this model. Um, the I-11 came out first and the 12 is a revision of the 11. I don't think it matters which one you get, um, especially for what we're doing. If we're using it just for use Zeons, uh, they both perform really, really great. Um, they use a 92 millimeter PWM fan uh, that just clips on the front here. And they have three heat pipes uh, that are split kind of like this. They go up. Um, so I guess it would be like it's technically three but they call it six um, and it's a really really dense and like you can see it's much wider than the uh, 32 and 33 uh, but these work great and sometimes they go on sale as low as 23.99 I think there are the 12 is on sale for 23.99 right now you can tell the CO version because it has a gray fan the regular versions have black and white fans like these but it looks like this um, it doesn't matter which, which one you get the CO is technically designed for continuous operation um, I haven't found any difference between the two uh, they say the fans designed a little differently but I don't know take that for what you will so the i11 and i12 are great um, you can use them on socket 11.5x, which is 1150, 1151, 1155, and 1156, as well as socket 1366 Xeon only, and socket 2011. Um, this is a backplate for desktop 11.5x. Um, we're not going to use this because all of our Xeon boards come with a backplate which is why we can use it with 1366 so we take the 11.5x screws which are the finer threaded ones and we thread them through the outermost hole which is the 2011 hole and that will allow us to use it with 1366 I have another video on this channel of me installing these on 1366 and they work great. Um, so that goes for both of these. Now the i11 and the i32, I, I, don't, I think it's just called the 32, so the i11 and the 32 have the same style mounting bracket. It's this sort of u-shaped and it screws in through the bottom with two screws. Um, there's nothing wrong with this design, but they revised it on the 12 and the 33 to look more of this H or I type bracket. It uses one screw, screws in from the top, and it now has three holes in, uh, like three mounting holes. So you have your 11.5x and 2011 or you know 1366 for what we use and then there's also an AM4 mounting hole so it doesn't matter which one you buy because it's going to be compatible with what we're using it for uh, just keep in mind that in my one video I'm mounting I11s and not this one I'll do a video uh, when I build this system but just keep in mind the the differences so the 12 looks like the 11 but has this style mounting bracket the 32 looks like this, but it has this style mounting bracket. And unfortunately, one of the things I've noticed with the newer style mounting bracket, because it has this extra, this extra like little part here, on certain ATX motherboards, uh, especially the dual CPU ones, um, it can get really, really close to the RAM slots. 
So a buddy of mine actually had to take his uh, heat spreaders off of his RAM in order to fit the RAM into the RAM slots. Uh, but there was like less than a millimeter of clearance without the heat spreaders between this and the RAM. So not a huge deal and it works fine. Um, but just something to keep in mind. If you're not using an ATX dual socket setup, it's not really anything to worry about. Um, so the i11 and i12 are this guy, 32 and 33 are this one. One of the things that they've improved um, from the 11 to the 12 and the 32 to the 33, it, uh, they're now semi-passive on the 12 and the 33, which means that the fan will turn off if it's under 40% PWM. So if the fan speed's low enough, the fan just shuts off completely. I think that's a really neat feature, um, especially for power saving, and they have a high confidence that these heat sinks will uh, be able to do well enough passive, and if you got a fan in the back and a couple fans in the front, you're going to get get a little bit of airflow over it anyway, so I don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, I think that's really cool. Um, I like the 33, or the, excuse me, 32 and the 33 a little more. I like being able to use um, standard 120 millimeter fans. This is the one it comes with. It's a PWM and it has a PWM splitter on the end. Uh, they're pretty easy to mount. I'll show you how to mount that in a second. And uh, so mounting the fan for, for the uh, i11 and i12 is really easy too. You just clip it on from the sides. You kind of want to line up the top. And that's it. I like the 32 and 33 a little more because um, if you look from the top, it's a bit narrower this way. So in uh, like a dual dual socket ATX setup, you'll have room to put fans on either side of this guy. Um, maybe like if you have two of them, you have one here and then a fan in the middle, fan on this side and a fan on the back. You could do something like that, which I think would be really neat. Um, this one can fit in some dual socket ATX setups. Uh, I, I actually say it would fit in most. If they're really, really tight, it, it won't fit exactly. So you'll have to run one passive and one with the fan, which is not a big deal. These things are really, really overrated. I think that like not overrated in a bad way. They're overrated as in they can put out or they can, uh, dissipate a lot more heat than most of the processors that we're using anyway. So even running them fanless isn't a huge deal. Um, mounting the fan on this guy, they give you four wire brackets. So um, the regular versions have one PWM fan. The CO versions have a gray fan that looks like this in this color. And then the plus versions have two fans. Uh, plus versions might be worth it depending on the price. If it's only five dollars more than the regular or uh, than the C uh, the CO, I would definitely go for it. Um, so you take the wire brackets. I just put it in backwards, but the uh, I guess like the mounting point goes in, and then this goes towards the inside. This little arm piece goes towards the inside. So it's better to start with the top so you don't scratch scratch the aluminum with the uh, the end of the paper clip looking like thing here. And you just kind of feed it through the bottom hole. Do the same thing with the other side. I also like this one because I think it's a little easier to take the fan on and off. Um, both of these, you'll have to have the fan off in order to mount them. So think about your order of operations when you're assembling your system. Um, they'll have to be mounted with the fan off. Um, so you just take your fan, kind of uh, 
line it up, pull these little brackets over so they go into the, uh, the holes there. And then I'll just do one on the other side just to uh, see how it looks. That's the other thing. The side with the blades that's open versus the side that has the bracket. This side is exhaust and this side is intake. You can also tell just by looking at the blades to see the way they're curved. They're always going to be pushing in this way. So if you spin it the way, you can kind of tell which Fan airflow direction is a big issue for some people. I, I don't know why they just can't figure it out, but I see people with their fans mounted backwards all the time in their cases and whatnot, and I'm like, man, fix your fans. So anyway, uh, I'm going to mount this guy like this. I put it on right. Okay. Hmm. This fits a little looser than the other one. I wonder why that is. So I think they actually give you a couple uh, rubber pieces to put on your back fan. Oh yeah, yeah. So they give you these spacers to put on your back fan um, to pull it away from the, the heat sink a little bit like this. And that's so that it doesn't produce as much noise because when you're blocking um, a, fan, uh, a fan's intake like this, if you don't have it separated a little bit from what you're blocking, it'll produce a lot more noise than a fan like this where it's open on the intake side and then blocked on the exhaust side. So anyway, this is what the uh, 32 plus or the 33 plus would look like. And then again, if you have a CO version, these fans will be gray like that one. Um, and then if you have a regular version of this one, they will be black and white like this one. Um, I guess the only other thing is they all come with thermal paste. Um, typically you can get two CPU cooler mountings out of one little packet of thermal paste. So if you buy two, then you should have enough to mount them twice. Um, if not, you can pick up some on eBay elsewhere. Um, the new style, oh, uh, last thing, the new style mountings with the i12 and the 33, they come with three sets of screws. The largest and the fattest ones, these are for 2011. The middle size threads are for AM4. And the very, very tiny ones are for 115X and 1366 or 1356. So again, you'll be using the inside hole here, let's see if I can get a better angle. The inside hole will be for 115X. The one directly next to it will be 2011, 1366, and 1356. So hopefully this answers everyone's questions about Arctic uh, coolers. Again, buy whichever one you think is the best deal. I wouldn't say that I mean, unless you're looking for ultimate cooling, I guess this would be the, the best setup, but 
I mean, uh, I would buy what, whatever's cheapest and whichever one you like the most. I wouldn't worry about 11 versus 12, or I wouldn't worry about uh, 32 versus 33 either. I don't think the differences are enough. Um, so keep that in mind. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and I'll see you guys next time.